Well, that looks like the end of the road. Keep going. Stop. Wow, that's like just a sheer cliff. visiting with some friends in Seattle and we're looking for a free place to camp for a few days. Unfortunately there's not a lot of good free camping around Seattle, it's mostly city, and after about an hour of researching things on iOverlander and various other apps we found that some of the best boondocking in the area is out near Mount Rainier on Forest Service land. We're right in the middle of our winter camping series and we're still working on the third part. Uh, we ended up going to Yellowstone and we just recorded so much that it's really difficult to go through all the stuff and make a good video. So stay tuned for the third part, we're still working on it. So we've been on the road for about an hour and a half and we're getting closer to the Forest Service land and we want to find a site before it gets too dark. According to iOverlander, the reviews indicate that there's probably five or six different places that we could camp, but only a couple of them have cell service. So we have to drive up and kind of evaluate each site and pick the one that we like. So like Sasha said, we're a little behind on making that third part of our winter camping series because we've had a very busy week this week. So we thought instead that we would take you along on a typical afternoon of finding a boondock site. All of these boondock sites that are on Iorblander indicate that they are off of a forest service road that appears to go up a mountain. Uh, we don't know what the, the conditions are, but we've been on at least 100 different forest service roads all over the country, and they're usually pretty well maintained. There's going to be, I would imagine, potholes and maybe the occasional mudslide or a lot of washboard roads. Uh, we really don't know. Sometimes they're impassable, but I would say 99% of the time they're in good shape. We always get excited about this process because we never really know what we're going to find. It might not work out, or it may end up being one of the best sites we've ever found. So we're going to take you along and show you what we see on this very windy, cold, rainy day in Washington. Alright, according to the GPS, our turn is coming up. It's Forest Road number 72. Should be up here on the left. There it is. So it looks like there's a gate up ahead and we have seen several of these roads closed. I'm hoping it's open. Well, it looks like it's open. That's a good sign. All too many times we've driven like an hour or two out to find that the site is closed or it's gated off or it's inaccessible. And then that means we got to drive two hours back to where we came. All this boondocking stuff is kind of an inexact science, but luckily all of the apps that we use are very helpful and they kind of make it, I don't know, we have about what, an 80% 80, 80 success rate? Yeah, something like that. It looks like we are approaching our very first site.
Well, it certainly looks like a popular site. That's a beautiful view. Oh, wow. This is definitely doable. It's right off the highway, though. It's like maybe three minutes in. We usually like to be a little further off the highway than that. But let's uh, let's test the internet and see how it is, and we'll check the site out real quick. To do testing, testing, go, come on. That's a bad sign. <laughs> Still connecting. Give it a second. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Yeah, normally when it takes this long to connect, uh, it's probably a little slow. I'm not feeling super confident with this. Let's try Wi-Fi. So we have AT&T with a hotspot. We have a MoFi 4500 um, cellular hotspot. We get service through AT&T. So between Verizon and AT&T, so sometimes we have service. Our AT&T is a little better. Uh, let's see, the download is a little slow, I would say. Uh, very slow. You're not gonna be able to do your lessons on that. No. I mean, it's probably doable for, you know, doing little things, but for both of us to work, I don't, I don't know. And wow. No, and that's terrible. Yeah. All right, so this probably is not the best site. Well, this certainly is a beautiful spot. Uh, without cell service, I think we're gonna move. We're always excited to explore new places and we need internet, so we can't really do anything without it. So we have to move on. But before it gets dark, we might as well explore the whole road and see what we can find. And worst case, if we have to, we can always come back here. Yeah. All right, let's go. Stopping and starting. It's kind of taking a break right now. So as we're making our way up this hill, my transmission and oil temperature and all that stuff is climbing. I never have overheating issues with the truck, but I think this is like an eight or nine mile climb up. So I'll be curious to see what the temperatures do. Right now I have it just locked in first gear. I don't need four wheel drive for anything. We're getting some washboard sections. Not too bad so far. Washboard always seems to be the worst going uphill or downhill. We just got to this site, which is very cute and everything, but the road seems to have washed out. So we're not gonna really fit in there. Nice and smooth for the most part.
so we've been driving for a while and we haven't seen any other sites. I hope we're gonna see some. They're definitely there. We just, we have, I don't know, two or three more miles of this to go before we get to the next set of sites. All right, so it looks like we're coming up to another potential spot that we found on iOverlander. Uh, it should be right on our left. Yep, there it is. Let's see what's in here. A little mud. No shooting. That's cool with us. Well, it's a cool site. Nice and private, a little too small. A little small. I can't, uh, yeah, I can't really turn around. Well, I could turn around, just take a while. How's the cell service? Let me check. I feel like we're, we're so surrounded by trees in here that we're probably not going to have very good service. Not too promising. Alright, I mean maybe with a cell phone booster, but uh, let's keep going. Yeah. I personally love driving in the rain, I like driving in the mud, and it's part of what we do anyway. Uh, it's a little bit gloomy, and we are getting in and out of the truck to change the cameras, so we're getting soaked. But I enjoy the process of driving and the worst case is we can go back to the original site that we found. At least it has some internet. It would be enough to, I don't know, not to work, but to watch uh, movies or something. My biggest concern is it's getting dark and I'm hoping that we can find something before it's too dark. Which gives us about two hours because it's right around three o'clock right now. Yeah, gotta go. Gotta go. So this is actually another campsite it's listed. I think someone just pulls over right here. That's not what we're looking for. It's really steep. I don't know if you can tell how steep it is, but we're sitting like this. I'm not even going to consider this a campsite. I think it's more no. like pull off. We're all set. We're going to keep going. Truck's doing pretty well, 208 degrees, but the transmission's staying pretty cool. Nice and smooth right here. I'm kind of doing 20 miles an hour. Not for long. 
All right, well, this looks like what used to be a rock slide, mud slide. It looks like it's cleaned up. That is steep, wow. It's tough to show on camera, but this is a, a very steep side of the cliff and they just cut a road out. The further up we go, the steeper it gets. Amazing view, but this is way too steep for us. Yeah, yeah, this is too much. There's too many other options to go look at, but I'm gonna get out and show you what we can see. This is beautiful. It's a little steeper than what I wanna level on. Look at these trees, they're huge. the campsite. Look at that. Pretty incredible view, but once again, very tilted. It's the same angle as the road. Well, <laughs> looks like uh, we need to keep going. I would say so. Scott is mounting a GoPro. So the temperatures are starting to rise. Engine's at 210, transmission's at 174, and my oil is at 210. All of which are totally normal. Looks like our rear view camera dried out a little bit. That's convenient. So what do you think about driving all these mountain roads? I like doing that. Well, I like the fact that you're driving them, <laughs> number one. And I think number two, I'm still excited that we still got some sunlight. Uh, I wouldn't want to do this in the dark. It's 3.30 now. Um, wow, it's steep. And it's definitely, with all the cloud cover, it's definitely getting dark. But it's been getting dark around, what, five o'clock lately? Yeah. So I'd say we got about an hour and a half. That's pretty. The road is getting narrower and steeper and tighter. Wow. I'm not sure if you can see, but that, I don't know, cloud or rain moves so quickly. You can watch it. Wow. Yep, we have clouds blowing right up through here. So sorry about the wind noise, but it just got really, really windy and the temperatures dropped 10 degrees. It's much cooler up here. Yeah. So it's really pretty though. I'm really hoping that we won't encounter any like really bad weather because right now it's looking really, really stormy. And I know mountains can get pretty severe quickly. The forecast said that snow was expected over 8,000 feet. And I think the top of this mountain is only 6,000 feet. So we should be underneath it, but it's starting to have this like frozen rain consistency. Yeah. So we'll just keep on going. Oh, look at 
look at this. We're definitely gaining elevation. Well, there's a campsite. All right. I really like to find things that are off the road. We want some privacy. You can't always find that. Um, but there was one site up here. They said it was their favorite and it was really far off the road. But it was a little bit difficult to get to. It was pretty steep and rocky, they said. So I'm, I'm hoping on that one. We'll see. Wow, look at the wind. Whew. And it's starting to turn to ice. Oh wow. Look at this. We're in the cloud. And we're on a cliff. That's a good wow, combination. That's beautiful. Oh, that's cool. We can see the river down there. Sorry about the wind. It's getting very icy and uh, very windy. So sorry about all the noise, but very pretty. And I think that is our next boondock spot. I can't get it to focus. There we go. Wow. The winds are really bad. Yeah, it's blowing really hard. The higher up we go, the worse it gets. All right, so this is the, let's see what it says. This spur road does not connect up with USFS 70 road. So what it's saying is, oh, there must be like a little spur road down here that doesn't go anywhere. But this is the place that everyone says is awesome. So let me run down there and check it out because that might be something that I won't be able to turn around in and I don't want to have to back up. Oh, you can see some blue skies. That's exciting. So Scott is checking on the spot. Hopefully it's good. All right, so I'm going to run down this road and see what it looks like. Definitely looks drivable, but boy, is it windy. really bothers me to see when people leave trash like this in these beautiful places. Why, why do that? They're going to get shut down. Well, <laughs> looks like somebody left their fire in a hurry. Got a blanket, another blanket. Yeah. Well, this does look like a cool spot. It's flat enough. I could park down here. I think that sign is talking about how that doesn't really go anywhere. This is definitely doable. Bizarre weather. We have blue skies up there. And we have like, I don't know, hail or snow, whatever this is, sleet. Weird. It's getting very cold. It's starting to snow and ice. I think this is a good option. Down below is a little warmer. This is definitely much more private. Hey, it looks like he's coming back. Let's see what he has to say. So how was it? Well, definitely a, a trickier road to drive down. Really? Uh, there's some blankets down there. What? And an old ottoman. So I think someone either cleaned up camp really fast or I have no idea. Huh, that's weird. But uh, it's doable. Really? But it's definitely starting to spit ice out. I was gonna say, it looks pretty weird. It's like either hail or ice or snow or something. It's like freezing rain. Wow. Well, Not quite snow, but it's ice pellets. Yeah, crazy weather. So, it's level though. Okay. And uh, why don't we check the internet real quick? Sure. See if it works. Yeah, let's do that. Let me try AT&T first. Oh, Ooh, that's really good. That's exciting. We might have a winner. 
I still want to drive a little more though. Okay. So it looks like the AT&T speed test and the Verizon speed test are pretty good. I think they're very usable here and we are getting some snow. Well. And it looks like the temperatures dropped down to about 35 degrees. So it's not quite freezing yet, but probably about a thousand feet above us it is. So I think we may end up driving up into snow. That site was really good, I like it. I would love to stay there, especially it has a decent view and it's pretty sheltered from the wind. That's cool. It's definitely starting to snow. it's getting darker it's four o'clock now so our our time for hunting is quickly running out and if it's snowing here we probably want to go back down a little bit because I, I don't want to end up uh, getting the road really covered in snow because I just have no idea if it's gonna be an inch no big deal but if we get two feet of snow I don't want to deal with that oh look at that road super twisty the last spot that we wanted to check out on our route is near the top. So we're gonna just zoom up to the top and, and see what's up there. Uh, and then with how late it's getting and the fact that it's snowing up here, there's a high likelihood we're gonna just return back to that last spot that we liked. Oh wow, that's pretty. Oh yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. That Absolutely is beautiful. gorgeous. Talk about like your classic Pacific Northwest snowy rainy scene right here. Tall pine trees. Wow. It's definitely snowing. So we're at about 46, 4,700 feet and we can feel it. The air is a little thinner and obviously the snow has picked up and it's, uh, let's see, 32 degrees out now. So it's definitely getting to be freezing. Chances are we're probably going to head back down, but since we've come this far, we might as well keep going and see what's up there. Yeah, this is a very wintry experience.
some more, uh, what do you call it, rock slide area. Definitely looks like we're the only ones up here. Yeah, I was gonna say, I didn't see any other tire marks. No. Could be someone up here hiking and they drove up before the snow, but I don't see anyone. I'm not 100% sure, but I think we're about eight miles up this road. And uh, I think we're getting to the end. There's only maybe two miles left. that road in Grand Tetons though. No. If you guys aren't sure what we're talking about, we drove through probably the worst road we've ever experienced in our lives and it was in Grand Teton National Park and I'll leave a link to it probably right up here I think. You can still see the holes because the, the water is melting the snow, so they stick out like a sore thumb. So this is the, the last boondock spot, but it looks, mm, I don't think we want to camp up here. spot it's a little extreme though it's super windy and super cold and it's not even snowing it's like really sharp snow pellets it's it's pretty harsh mm -hmm. up here 
Let me show you the edge. Talk about an epic view. Huh, <laughs> that's the road we came up. Well, as nice as this is, do you want to stay up here or do you want to go back down to some shelter? Actually, what's the internet like up here? I just assume it's not going to work. I don't think it's going to work. Personally, I'd rather be sheltered and someplace yeah. warmer. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind going back down. Yeah, me either. Before the snow gets too deep and too slippery, let's go back down and, and hopefully that spot's still okay. Yeah. So we've decided that we're gonna just head back. Um, it's 4.40 and 31 degrees. It, they are calling for a lot of rain and snow and it looks like their original 8,000 foot elevation estimate is, is wrong because we're at 5,300 feet and it's snowing. And it's probably gonna get colder tonight, which means it's gonna just get worse and worse. So I think we'll, get, we'll head back down because we actually have to leave in the morning for an appointment, so we don't want to be stuck. But before we head off, we're gonna go to the end of the road. It's right up ahead, I think, and uh, we'll we'll see what's there, and then we'll we'll head back. Looks like the end of the road. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't have my chainsaw with me, so it's late. We gotta we gotta head back. But I, I'm not sure if I can do a three point turn up here. It's really narrow. I might have to just back down. Hmm. Okay, time to go home. I think I can do a three point turn. Yep, keep going. Keep going more. Stop. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Stop. That's it. My fingers are frozen. All right guys, so it looks like that's the end of the road and boy, that is why I love having a truck camper. We're gonna go back to our original site that we liked and before it gets too dark, I wanna show you guys the process of us getting down there. So I gotta kinda hurry back. We'll see you in a couple minutes.
was just thinking, that tree fell down in front of us. I mean, not in front of us, but that tree fell down and blocked our path. And imagine if we'd gone up there and hiked for the day and come back and had that there. Well, yeah. I mean, what I probably would have done is grabbed our toe straps and dragged it out of the way because I don't have a chainsaw. I have some saws, but nothing to cut that thing. That was a huge tree. That would take us a while to cut that tree. But yeah, having the toe straps has a lot of utility because you can tow yourself out of a ditch. Well, you can get someone to tow you out of a ditch. You can also use it to tow rocks and trees off the road, which we've never had to do. So it looks like we're getting close to our site and the snow seems to have disappeared. It's still snowing, but it's not accumulating. This is what we can see out of the backup camera at night. A lot of lines and dots. There we go, that's pretty good. All right, so we're back to the site and I'm gonna make my way down there. From the last time we went down there, it looks like I should have no problem doing a three point turn. So we're gonna see how that goes. So I wanted to get turned around so it's easier to get out in the morning, especially if we get snow. And it's not as level down here as I thought. It's, everything's tipped that way and I don't want to deal with blocks. So I'm using the unlevel ground to try to get my wheels to move around to the point where I'm level or the camper's level. The axles will probably be a little bit crossed. Oh, that's really close. The bubble's a little off, but that's what we need. It can be either flat or down in the nose into the driver's side because then- We prefer then when it's a little bit down because then our shower can drain. Can't really see it, but we have this big cloud that's blowing in right now. So we probably have more rain or snow coming. A little snowy and slippery, not too bad. Crazy, what a crazy day. Looks like everything survived. Yeah. So wow, that was quite a day. And sometimes I'm still surprised that this is our normal life. This is what we do on a daily basis. Sometimes we don't really encounter the snow in harsh weather, but most of the time something happens. It's either raining or snowing or windy or something. Or, like today, all of it all at once. Rain, snow, wind, mud, ice, yeah. all of it. So we're happy that we made it here. There's no snow, less wind, and there's good cell service. So we're excited. We got here kind of just in the nick of time. It's definitely dark now, but we kind of knew where we were going. So many times we've been off traipsing through the woods trying to find a place to camp, and at least we had plenty of time to get it done today. And a huge part, at least for me, is I love driving to all these different places and using the truck as a truck. 
Like that's why we got a truck camper so that we can drive up mountain roads and deal with snow and ice and, and turn around on dirt roads when you find a tree across it. <laughs> that was a little unexpected. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of next week, I'll be able to have our Winter in Wyoming series finished with part three. We actually spent two days in Yellowstone and I have almost 10 hours of footage to go through. And this week being so busy, I just didn't have time to get it done. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and thank you for joining us on our little journey up the mountain. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Seems like our days are never complete until I fill up the water. Good morning, it's the next morning, and this is our view.